Thank you so much for joining us for this week's episode of Mummy Talks with me, Catherine Karongo. There is a common assumption that a woman cannot go through a vaginal bath or what we call as a normal delivery after going through a cesarean section in a previous bath. Today we are joined by Dr. Felix Oindi, a gynecologist obstetrician at the Aga Khan University Hospital to demystify this myth and tell us more about vaginal bath after a C-section. Stay with us. So today we want to discuss vaginal bath after a CS, or what many of us call normal bath after CS. So um, there is a common assumption that you cannot go through a vaginal bath after you've had a CS. Is it possible? It's actually possible to have vaginal bath after caesarean section, what we commonly call VBAC. Uh, some places they call it TOLAC, that is trial of labor after caesarean section. Uh, it's possible, especially if you've had one previous caesarean section, and it has multiple benefits, uh, which other people who've had normal delivery enjoy. And we actually encourage uh, patients who've undergone uh, one caesarean section before to try give birth as much as possible, unless the indication is uh, an indication that is uh, recurring. Yes. So you've talked about uh, one cesarean section. What about if you've had multiple cesarean sections? Um, generally, uh, the biggest uh, risk uh, you stand when you're trying a normal delivery after cesarean section is the uterus rupturing or where the previous cut was giving way and that can actually be life-threatening to the mother and the baby. And uh, the risk of that rupture tends to increase based on the number of caesarean sections you've had. So when you've only had one caesarean section, the risk of rupturing is actually very minimal, possibly about one in 500. When you've had two, it increases to about one in 50. And when you've had more than two, say three, four, the risk is much higher. So we generally don't encourage when you've had more than one caesarean section to try a normal birth. Talking about risks, apart from the uterine uh, rupture, what other risks are there? So the risks can generally be categorized into risks to the mother and risks to the baby. So the general risk to the mother is rupture, which I have mentioned. And uh, when it occurs, as I've said, it can be life-threatening because it means uh, the mother will bleed a lot and uh, will most of the time require emergency uh, caesarean section thereby to repair the rupture and even occasionally they may end up losing the uterus though that is very rare. To the baby, uh, if not uh, detected early, uh, actually you can end up losing the baby and that's why we usually encourage that if you're trying to have a normal delivery after caesarean section, you should do it in a setup that is able to offer emergency caesarean section. Other than the fact that you've gone through one CS uh, for you to enable you go through a vaginal bath, is there any other thing that makes you ready for a vaginal bath after a CS? So uh, the first um, um, prerequisite is we need you to be willing. Most of the time, the more motivated you are, the more likely you are going to succeed in having a, a normal delivery. The second thing is you should have no other contraindication to normal delivery. For example, if your baby is lying across what we call a transverse lie, or the baby is seated, which means the baby is coming with bottoms first, then that, is, that even if you don't have a, a previous caesarean section is not a, advisable for you to go through a normal birth. Mm -hmm. uh, also, the other thing is if you have a low-lying placenta. Uh, because that way, if you start going into labor, the placenta can actually separate before and you bleed a lot. Mm -hmm. So in the absence of any other indication, then you should actually try. Most of the other indications, uh, contraindications are a bit relative. Uh, for instance, if we suspect your baby is more than four kilos, mm -hmm. we think it's not advisable, but we've actually had uh, babies even 4.5 kgs who've been born uh, normally and uh, with no major issues to the mother. What about in a case where there are twin baths? Can you do a vaginal bath when you've had a CS previously? Yes, uh, if you have a twins and uh, you want to try a normal delivery, as long as the first twin is head down, we can actually allow you to try it. And we've had a few who've succeeded. Mm -hmm. So twins is not a contraindication mm -hmm. to having a normal delivery after caesarean section. But I need to emphasize that the main 
uh, factor that determines the success of uh, the normal delivery is if you've had a normal delivery before. So somebody who's had one or two normal deliveries then gets a CS after that, then the chance of having a normal delivery subsequently is very high. Similarly, if your first baby was a caesarean section and you get a normal delivery after that, it increases your chance of having normal deliveries in the future, mm -hmm. which we know has various benefits, like a shorter hospital stay, a quicker recovery, less need for pain medication after that. And generally, women who've had a normal delivery tend to get about their normal functions much faster than caesarean section. How do the statistics look like in terms of how many women are able to go through a normal delivery, delivery after a CS? Um, to be honest, we don't have actual data in our setting, and this is because many doctors have various preferences. So there are doctors who tell you strictly they don't want to try a normal delivery after caesarean, but good thing with our institution, Aga Khan, is that we encourage everybody who's gone through caesarean section to try a normal delivery. And uh, especially if we know the caesarean section was done at term, at term which means you'd gone through the whole pregnancy to at least past 37 weeks. Um, as I mentioned, what we worry about is rapture. So rapture will occur more if the caesarean section was done before term, like if the caesarean section was done at 34 weeks, then the uterus, what we call the lower segment, had not developed so well. So those are not very good candidates for trying. But in terms of how many patients will get into um, uh, trying the normal delivery and succeed, we actually quote the success rate to be above 70%. And some centers that practice a lot of VBAC, they quote as high as 80%, which means 8 out of 10 will succeed. There is always the debate on which is better, a CS versus normal delivery. How can, what can we say about that? CS versus normal, we think normal, even the way you say normal. <laughs> it means the other one is abnormal, but it's actually not abnormal because at the end of the day, we look at the outcome. Uh, whenever there is an indication, then we should go for the safest uh, mode of delivery for the mother and for the baby. But uh, in terms of if you qualify for both, normal has advantages. Uh, uh, like I mentioned earlier, shorter hospital stay, uh, quicker uh, post-operative, post-delivery recovery. So many people after normal delivery, they'll be up and about the same day. But caesarean section will still find them nursing the pain for even three, four days after, and some can even go two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is in the event you need another delivery in future, of course, if you've had a normal delivery, it's going to be easier to have another normal. If you've had a CS, then it's going to be more likely that you'll have another caesarean section. Okay. Thank you so much. Anything else you'd like to add? Um, I'd like to encourage many, uh, as many as possible, want to try having a normal delivery after caesarean section to actually seek those services. Mm -hmm. If you're not able to get them from your healthcare provider, there are many uh, of the healthcare providers who are uh, offering those services. Uh, seek them. It has multiple benefits. And uh, the fear that we have of failure and uh, maybe bleeding is not so high. Uh, most important I need to say is whenever you try a normal delivery, we've had a few instances where people try to have a normal delivery after caesarean section at home. It's very risky because most of them, by the time they get to hospital, they bled a lot, and then they end up having these many complications. So as much as possible, uh, if you want to try a normal delivery after caesarean, please do it in a hospital facility or in a facility able to perform an emergency caesarean section. Thank you so much for staying with us. Join us again next week when we discuss postpartum depression, a condition that affects about 10% of women after childbirth. If you've not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe using the subscribe button below. You could also ring the bell to get notifications whenever we upload new content. Until next week, stay safe and goodbye.